Welcome to Beyond the Lab, a series by the Office of Career Development within the Biomedical Research, Education, and Training Department of the Vanderbilt University School of Medicine. My name is Kate Stewart, and I'm here today with Kim Dahlman, who graduated in 2006 in cancer biology. So welcome mm -hmm. back. We're glad to have you. Thank you. Um, tell me what you did here at Vanderbilt. Um, so I was a graduate student here um, in the cancer biology department, and I actually had two mentors. Um, uh, doctors Hal Moses and Jennifer Petenpaul. So I got to work in two different laboratories across the hall from one another and work on a project that bridged interests in both of the laboratories, which was actually a lot of fun. Yeah. So um, I worked on transforming growth factor beta signaling and looking at some of the downstream modulators of um, that signaling pathway. And um, my project was uh, looking at the functions of two particular proteins in their interactors. So I did a lot of um, teamwork um, with the mass spectrometry facility um, and also starting some new assays in the laboratory. Okay, so tell me about your path since Vanderbilt. What, did, what have you been doing? Sure, so um, you know, in terms of um, my research training, I did my postdoctoral fellowship at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York City um, for three years with Dr. Charles Sawyers, and that was really um, just a fantastic experience. When I went from my graduate training to my postdoctoral training, I really wanted to focus my work in the translational arena, which mm -hmm. means that I wanted my research to be more directly applicable to patients. and. Um, uh, Dr. Sawyers is really a trailblazer in that type of research um, in prostate cancer, so I went to work with his group to learn more about what they were doing in that type of research. Um, and so we were, yeah, in New York City for three years. It was a lot of fun, um, but then, you know, when it was time for me to to uh, look at career options, I, you know, knew that I did not want to be an independent um investigator, uh, meaning I didn't want to run my own laboratory, but I really loved research so I was, and teaching too. So I was looking for opportunities in that area. And um, I came back here to direct a shared resource, which is something I was not anticipating actually, but it's turned okay. out to be wonderful. So tell me more about your role and, and, and sort of what you do every day. Um, so every day. So my laboratory is pretty small. Um, it is translational in nature. So I work with clinical investigators to help them design experiments and carry them out in the laboratory. I work on clinical trials. So we do clinical trial uh, correlative experiments in the lab. Um, so I oversee uh, two people in the laboratory um, who are highly motivated. They're just really uh, great folks. We um, So typical days, I get into the lab, you know, I check email and make sure, talk to the people in the lab, make sure nothing crazy is going on and help them if they need it. Um, and I go to a lot of meetings. So most of my days are made up of um, meeting with clinical investigators. I have meetings with the medical school because I do teaching. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, just a lot of meetings. <laughs> Okay. So I've made sure my Mondays and Fridays, I'm letting the secret out. My Mondays and Fridays, I do not schedule any meetings so I can actually get work done. work done. Got it. Mm -hmm. So tell me maybe the ratio of teaching and research and maybe administrative things. Oh, gosh. So I'm not at the bench anymore. Okay. Um, uh, so, but, I, but we do do a lot of research. Right. So I would say probably if it's really based on time. So 15 or 20% teaching um, or at teaching administration mm -hmm. and then the rest of it, you know, research and service. Got so, it. you know, as a shared resource, you know, we're servicing the Vanderbilt community and we also work with folks outside of Vanderbilt as well. Right. Um, so I would say 80% research service. Okay, so how is this role a good fit for you personally? Um, it's been, it's been really wonderful. So what I love about what I do is that I work on multiple different tumor types. So my love is in cancer research. It's such a complex disease. It's debilitating it to so many people. It touches so many people's lives and the complexity, complexity of it is just so really interesting. Um, I'm not focused on one signaling pathway. I'm not focused on one tumor type. So I get to collaborate with a lot of really smart people, um, learn about different tumor types, and then apply different technologies to them. So I think what I really love about it is the collaborative nature of it. Okay. So <clears throat> if you, um, if there was a graduate student or postdoc who was interested in doing what you do now, what are some of the things that you might advise them to do during their training to, to best equip them for that role? Yeah. 
Um, business training. Okay. So I think that's really important, probably for anything that you do, to learn how to um, collaborate, to learn how to um, understand that there are multiple personalities that you have to deal with. Um, and then, so that that's the management part of it, but also I'm running a small business is really what it comes right. down to. So finance, um, marketing, you know, all of these things that small businesses have to do, I also have to be concerned with as well. So I think any opportunity that a student might have um, or a postdoc might have to get some sort of business training would be really useful. Okay, so <clears throat> what are some of the ways that you gain those skills um, post Vanderbilt? Um, so I didn't. <laughs> I pretty much um, start, you know, not not knowing, I mean, not recognizing that I was really running a small business. And and I was I was fortunate enough, though, that when I um, when I uh, was approached about this position and accepted it, you know, I understood I understood management pretty well. And I think I gained those opportunities from um, working with national organizations. So I worked with the American Association for Cancer Research for six years. I was the chair of the associate member council there. I really learned how to lead a team, um, manage um, a number of different projects and meet a deadline. Um, so that sort of experience I got uh, that way. And also in your, your PhD in postdoctoral research, you have to move projects forward. So you, So I think part of your training, you just learn how to project manage to some extent. Um, but the finance and business training, uh, that part of it, you know, I it was really on the ground. You know, I, I just learned as I, as I did. And then since then, I've attended, you know, some um, uh, some business finance training classes that Vanderbilt offers um, for free for their lab managers and, and faculty. So that's been really useful as well. OK, great. Um, in your path, you, I'm sure you've done some networking here and there. What are some of your personal strategies and your approach to networking? Yeah, so net, so networking, you know, people throw that around, but I think yeah. it's in a really important thing um, not to burn bridges and keep all connections open. Um, my approach to networking is probably against what most people would recommend, but I don't say no to anything, really. If an opportunity arises that's in my area of interest, I'll figure out a way to, to do it or to be involved in it. And that has really benefited me in a number of ways. One, it's helped me to explore different career options. So again, I, I worked uh, with a, a nonprofit organization and, and saw how that was organized. I've um, done a lot of teaching as well, and I recognize that I like that. You know, I've been doing research. Um, so I I don't say no to a lot of things, unless it's something I'm not interested in or I really don't have time for. Um, so that way I get to meet a lot of people, I get to investigate new areas, and then just you know keeping in touch with them, dropping them a line, going to scientific meetings, for example, um, and having lunch or dinner or drinks or breakfast, coffee, whatever, and just maintaining those contacts, letting them know what I'm doing, hearing from them what they're doing has been uh, really useful. Okay, great. Um, thank you so much for coming back. We've loved having you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you.